of you with joy and appreciation because Almighty God has allowed us to come together one more time. This day is especially special to me because this is the last day of me being 69. If I'm blessed to open my eyes in the morning, I will have made it to three score and ten. Two dear persons in my life made their transition at the age of 69. My brother-in-law, Dr. Raymond Miller in Little Rock, Arkansas, and Mr. Anderson White, my music teacher, who succumbed in Indianapolis, Indiana. Thank God for the journey. Now, my brothers and sisters, because so many of you have been kind, we have new audio-visual equipment. I do not want to start calling individual names, but I want to thank all those persons who offered technical assistance, organizational assistance, as well as financial assistance to make this possible. At this time, let us pause and offer a prayer and a blessing for the new audiovisual equipment the Ebenezer African Methodist Episcopal Church has been blessed to have. Eternal God, our Father, no matter how much we employ the use of modern technology, unless your Holy Spirit is involved, it means nothing. We want to thank you for blessing this church to be able to acquire this audiovisual equipment. We want to thank you for the persons who have volunteered and donated their professional services to make this possible. Bless this service now, and we give you the honor, the praise, and the glory in the blessed and precious name of Jesus that all of God's children say amen. Let us now please join in our call to worship. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The Lord your God is in your midst. The mighty one will save you. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He'll rejoice over you with singing. Let us be rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The hymn that we're going to line this morning is a very familiar hymn. But we'll find that the author of this hymn, Newton, had been involved in the slave trade. And many times he had closed scrapes and almost lost his life while being on the slave ship. Once he was fully converted, began to get involved in ministry, he penned these words, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. The law has promised good to me, his word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be, as long as life endures. We've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Let the people of God say amen. Let us pray. God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, we come today saying thank you for another opportunity to engage in this worship experience. I come personally saying thank you for blessing me to stand on the threshold of going into another decade of my life. But I also thank you now for Ebenezer Church, the family members and friends 
who have been kind, who have been supportive, and who prayed for this live stream service. We might not know when we can come back and worship between these consecrated walls again, but we're going to praise you anyhow. In every situation, we're going to give thanks. Now bless us individually as well as collectively. Bless the homes that have zoomed in, those that are listening. Help all of us to understand that even though the mountains might be high and the rivers might be wide, you have promised to be with us every step of the way. Many of us in the greater Detroit area, we've encountered a storm last night, but just as we know that storm will not last forever, we recognize that this coronavirus will not be with us forever. Bless and keep us now. Bless this worship experience. We just feel good on this day. We want to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the blessed and precious name of Jesus, we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Let us now listen to the selection, Take Me to the King, by Tamala Mann and Kirk Franklin. to pray but where are you I'm all church down hurt and abused I can't think what's left to do come truth is I'm weak no strength to to cry even if I
don't have much to bring. My heart's torn to pieces. It's my offering. Let the people of God say amen. I want to listen to our scripture lesson coming from the 16th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, the 19th through the 31st verse, where we find these words. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with, with crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this between us and you there's a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Let's listen to a few announcements. Uh, this coming Wednesday at 5 p.m., there will be a conference call with the ministerial team. We want to thank this nation for a phenomenal tribute to the late Congressman John Robert Lewis. There were three presidents who served in succession at his funeral, there was President, first of all, Bush, there was Clinton, there was President Barack Obama. All of them served for two complete terms. If you truly love John Robert Lewis, then make sure that you go to the polls on Tuesday if you have not submitted an absentee ballot and vote. And please make sure that you go and encourage everybody you know to make sure they vote in the November election. 
I'm sorry to announce the passing of Sister Lynette Evans, a member of this church who had served on the stewardess board. She passed away a week ago this Saturday. We want to remember the family and loved one in our prayers. Also, we must be mindful that Herman King, the former African-American candidate for the president, died of the coronavirus at the age of 74. But I want to end these announcements on a good note. Just a few days ago, the first African-American female was inducted and received her wings as a Navy fighter pilot. I'm talking about Navy Lieutenant Matlin Swigo. This sister graduated from the Naval Academy, and I was happy to hear that she was not given any special consideration, but she earned those wings to be a fighter pilot. Let the church say amen. Now we're going to take a moment for you to get your offering. What I'm going to do is already prepared, and then we're going to bless your offering that you're going to either pay online, submit in the mail, or bring by the church. I'm just optimistic you will do so. If you're not yet written your check or decided to give, I pray that you will do so right now. Help us as we maintain this church and meet our obligations to the conference and to the Connectional Church. Let me give you 30 seconds. Well, I am back. I have my offering, my tithe, benevolence. And even though I paid conference claims, I want to pay another half so that it will help us meet our obligation for this upcoming annual conference. I'm optimistic and I have faith that you will help us. And even if you're not a member of Ebenezer and you're listening to this live stream or you're witnessing it, your donations are very much appreciated. Take your offering now or your gift, place it in your hand, and let us offer a prayer. Eternal God, our Father, help us to understand that everything we have comes from thee. And when we give an offering, when we make a donation, we're only giving back a portion of that which you have blessed us to acquire ourselves. Bless the general offering. Bless the tithes. Bless our people who are going to give. And bless the conference claims. And guide and direct the officers and members and the finance team to use that which we've been blessed to receive in a prudent way. We thank you for all your blessings and your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't you feel better now? Because it's more blessed to give than to receive. And I want to say thank you now for what you have done, what you're about to do, and what you will do. Amen. Let us now listen to Worth Fighting For by Brian Wilson.
Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Our text this morning is housed in the scripture lesson coming from the 19th chapter of Luke. You need to understand that the gospel of Luke represents volume one of a two-part volume known as Luke Acts. The Gospel of Luke was written by the physician Luke, who's writing to a Gentile friend by the name of Theophilus. It is interesting that when you read the Gospel of Luke, the writer is very much concerned about those persons who were underprivileged, those persons who were poor, those persons who were marginalized and not considered a part of the mainstream. Many of you can remember the great mystic theologian by the name of Howard Thurman who wrote Jesus and the disinherited, 
And there was a seminary professor of mine, Thomas Hoyt, who got his PhD and his dissertation was on the poor in Luke Acts. Tom Hoyt went on to become a bishop in the CME Church and unfortunately he had an untimely death. But let us now listen to another message that comes from the gospel writer of Luke. The text is housed in what we call a parable. A parable was an allegory or story or a pedagogical technique, a teaching technique on the part of Jesus to convey a special message. And a part of preaching is the obligation and responsibility to also teach. We find now that there was a rich man, very rich, stayed in a mansion, a gate surrounded his mansion. He ate gourmet food every day. And during this particular time, they did not have knives and forks or napkins. Persons would eat with their fingers and food would get on their fingers and their hands. And in order to wipe the food off the fingers and hands, they would take a piece of a loaf of bread to wipe their fingers and hands and then they would throw the bread away. Well, outside of the gate of this rich man's house was a poor man by the name of Lazarus. Lazarus would eat the crumbs and the bread pieces that were thrown from the table of the rich man. This poor man, Lazarus, had ulcerated skin, but yet he was so weak that he could not fight the dogs that would come to lick his souls. Now when we get to our text, both the rich man and the poor man, Lazarus, they died. And the rich man finds himself in torment. But the rich man had ignored Lazarus. And Lazarus finds himself now in the bosom of Abraham. Let us listen to this conversation going on between the rich man and Abraham. Then he cried, beginning with the 24th verse. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those pass from their pass to you. Well, we're preaching today because I believe that Lazarus, the poor man, would say now to the rich man, you tried to keep me out. But the Lord took me in. You tried to keep me out, but the Lord took me in. When we study this parable that is told by Jesus, we find that there are two main characters, the rich man and the poor man, Lazarus. The rich man was not condemned for what he did, he was condemned for what he did not do. Don't we see that same situation in life today? Let us look at many of our political and elected officials. 
they don't even see or sensitize are they to the needs of the poor and those who are marginalized. They are not picketing many of them to keep us from getting, but they're not passing legislation that can help us move up the ladder in life. There are too many people who have been blessed, who have not had to struggle, and in the midst of their comfort, they do not even think about those who do not have and those who are less fortunate. Because of their attitude, they're acting as if they want to keep us out of enjoying the good things of life, but God is still on his throne. And even when humankind attempts to keep you out, the Lord will take you in. It is a crying shame that members of Congress, many of them, they have the best health care in the world. And when many of them retire, they will still have great health care. How in the world do many of them have the audacity to try to dismantle Obamacare or the American Affordability Act, which is an attempt on a president who was trying to provide quality health care to all Americans. When politicians allow themselves to be in their ivory tower and become so numb and lose their sensitivity to the less fortunate of their constituency and those in this country. They are no better than the rich man that we find in this story. We must look now at our educational system. Please, America, understand this. As the debate is going on, whether or not school doors will be open or whether or not there will be virtual learning, that there are poor boys and girls out there who do not have access to a computer. In some cases, there's no electricity in their home. They don't have the option of going to school or staying home and using a computer. Even if you must have virtual learning so that we can try to control the coronavirus, don't forget those who are less fortunate. Thank you, corporations. Thank you, philanthropists, who are providing computers and trying to make education possible for everyone. We cannot allow ourselves to become so caught up in our security that we forget those who are not blessed to have what we have. But oh, don't get too comfortable, my brothers and sisters. We might not be a politician, might not be an educator, but don't you realize each one of us, we have something to be thankful for? And each one of us with our behavior, we act like we're trying to keep certain folks out, but the Lord will take them in. I don't care what situation you are in right now. If you have food to eat, say thank you. If you have shelter, say thank you. For there's always somebody who's worse off than you. And when we are blessed, the Lord does not bless us to just keep our blessings for ourselves. But we must bless others. We must share with others. We must have compassion for others. We must have love for others. But hold on. Don't get too comfortable. Because I'm afraid even in the church, even within our ecclesiastical structure, we have too many folks with the rich man attitude and they're not sensitized to the Lazarus that keep church doors open and the Lazarus who are faithful and been on the battlefield a long time. We must stop having persons 
who are able to get certain ecclesiastical positions to forget what it means to be in the local church, to work hard and to strive hard to keep the church doors open and to pay conference claims. There are too many folks in our ecclesiastical structure who are not sensitized to some of those preachers who might not have been able to go to an institution of higher learning, but they know the Lord. They know Jesus in the parting of their sins. And they've been showing up every week, showing love and compassion for their members. There are some pastors who struggle and even use their own money to keep the church going. And those persons who are high officials must not be like the rich man and just want certain shepherds to make it off of the crumbs. This is God's house. God wants everybody to share at the banquet table. God wants everybody to be able to sit down and have a good meal. So not only must we be critical of America, not only of the educational system, but we must look at our individual selves and even our church. But look out now. Isn't it good to know that the Lord is on his throne? And even when some of us might feel rejected even when some of us might feel as if nobody cares the lord cares about us and i want you to understand that if the kingdom you are trying to build is not the kingdom of god that kingdom will fall and the very folks that you kick going up a ladder you have to kiss going back down because god is still alive and it is taken, my brothers and sisters, an unknown black man by the name of George Floyd turned this world upside down while being on the ground and saying, I can't breathe. No PhD, no politician, no engineer, no ordinary man. But the Lord I serve can take the nobodies of life and make somebodies. And because of the cry of that man, before he died, he said, you tried to keep me out, but the Lord took me in. And so just like Lazarus rest in the bosom of Abraham, George Floyd, they got room for you there too. So we must understand today, also my brothers and sisters, besides a George Floyd, not pneumonia, not tuberculosis, not cancer, but a coronavirus known as COVID-19 has come on the scene. Whether you are rich, whether you are poor, whether you are black, whether you are white, no matter where you live, no matter what ethnicity, no matter what religious background, coronavirus can take you out. And the Lord has a way of letting us know that this is his world. And you can only go so long trying to ignore his children. Look what you got to do now. Everybody needs to wear a mask. Look what you must do. Everybody needs to be concerned about each other. Don't allow yourself to be a fool and be led by a fool. You don't need to wear a mask. You better use some common sense because even when some folks try to keep you out, the Lord will take you in. I've come today to declare unto you that the Lord is on standby and soon and very soon we're going to find a vaccine for this coronavirus makes no difference if it comes from Russia comes from the United States we're concerned about the well-being of all of humanity my brothers and sisters they might have tried to keep you out. But the Lord 
will take you in. Eternal God, our Father, thank you for this opportunity to praise thee. We pray now thy blessings on all. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to get ready now for the sacrament of the Holy Communion. Let me make a few adjustments. Before we go and offer the Holy Communion, there might be one today who has not yet developed a personal relationship with the Lord. We invite you to make that decision to accept Jesus as your personal Savior and to make up in your mind that you want to be a follower of the teachings of Jesus. If you've been touched today and you've made that decision, please do not retreat. Please remember that when church doors open, you may come to the house of worship. Let it be known to the shepherd and officers of that church as well as the congregation that you have decided to follow Jesus. As we would normally do, my brothers and my sisters, on this first Sunday, we would sing probably a couple of stanzas of there is a fountain filled with blood. Uh, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. The thine thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away, wash all my sins away, wash all my sins away. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. Let us now prepare to join in our general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayer of consecration. You may follow along with me, and we are attempting to make this as natural and as real as possible. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself 
once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these, your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the mission of sins. Please take your cracker, your bread, your wafer, whatever you have that symbolizes the body of Jesus, and won't you eat it now? Please take your cup or your glass, whatever the contents might be, kosher wine, grape juice, water, and let us now drink together that symbolizes the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> Let us pray together, my brothers and sisters. We all know this prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we've tried not to rush the service on this day to address every component of a Eucharist or Holy Communion service. I thank God for being a part of your home and your families on this day. And again, I want to thank all who has made this possible. And now, let us receive our benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with you, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. God bless. We love you. I come before you this morning representing the entire family of Ebenezer Amy Church and everyone who's with us, Paula and Michael, our family in Texas. We wish you a happy birthday and we are grateful all the service that you give this church. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm through. God bless you.